The number one question we get as we travel the world is how much does it cost to live a lifestyle of full-time world travel? Well, in today's video, we're gonna tell you the things that you need to consider and how to estimate a trip of your own. We're John and Bev, and we are the Retirement Travelers. If you would have told me a few years ago that I would be sitting in a hotel room in Kosovo filming a YouTube video, I would have said, you're crazy, but here we are. If you're new to our channel, Bev and I sold everything to travel the world and live our dream in retirement. This summer, we're planning to go to every country in the Balkans and we are absolutely loving it. So in today's video, we're gonna to talk to you about all the costs associated with world travel. So let's get started by talking about the three types of travelers. The first type of traveler we wanna talk about is the luxury traveler. And I wanna talk about some of the characteristics of the luxury traveler. They tend to go to the expensive locations might be Switzerland or Dubai or the South Pacific or Singapore, places that are generally uh, the cost of living is more. The next thing about the luxury traveler is they're, they're usually not full-time travelers. They will go on a vacation or a nice tour that might be a few weeks to a maximum of a month. They tend to travel first class and that's usually with they rent cars or they have a private driver or they, they fly first class. The next thing they do is they tend to stay in resorts and nice hotels, definitely on the high end of the lodging. From an eating perspective, they would dine out at nice restaurants, the five-star kind of places. And in general, on tours, they would do more package tours where someone else does the planning and you don't really have to think about you know, where you're going. You just show up and someone tours you around. So those are some of the main characteristics of what a luxury traveler looks like. On the other end of the spectrum is the budget traveler. And as we've traveled the world, we've actually seen a couple of different types of budget travelers. The, the first one is the younger backpacker. And we admire so much about the, the, the kid backpacking around the world. They carry everything they own on their back. Uh, they take 20 hour bus trips. They're, very, they're on the move all the time, but they're very cognizant of their, of their food costs, their transportation costs, and their lodging costs. The other type of budget traveler is the slow traveler, and they tend to be older, and we're gonna talk about them a little bit more. So the first characteristic of the slow traveler is they stay in low cost locations. Now we're gonna put a link in the description below on the cost of living in all countries in the world. And if you're wondering, I think somewhere between 80 and 90% of the world's countries are lower cost than the US. But some of the popular places for slow travelers are Southeast Asia, like Thailand, uh, the Balkans, uh, like where we're at right now, Kosovo, most of the Balkans are very low cost, uh, Central and South America. So there's lots of different places in the world where you can go and visit that are you know, half the price of the United States. The second characteristic of the slow traveler is just that, they're slow. They tend to stay in places a much longer time, typically a month. And by staying somewhere a month, there's a couple big advantages. One is you usually get a big discount on your lodging by staying a longer period of time. You also reduce your transportation costs not moving from place to place. So definitely a big advantage from a budget standpoint. The third characteristic of the slow traveler is they are economy travelers. They look for bargains on their flights. They take public transportations, lots of buses, metros, and trains. Rarely would they ever rent a car or take a taxi. They keep their transportation costs as low as possible. The next characteristic is they keep their lodging costs down. They will tend to stay in Airbnbs and they stay there for a whole month where you get the monthly discount and that reduces your lodging expenses significantly. The fifth characteristic is they utilize the kitchens in their Airbnbs and they cook at home, they go to local grocery stores and rarely eat out. The next characteristic is they utilize as many low cost or inexpensive activities as possible. There are a lot of things to do in these places, uh, free museums, free walking tours, even going to a movie. Brings back a memory, we went to see Top Gun in Belgrade. We spent $3 for a Coke and the movie. The last characteristic of the slow traveler is they minimize their tour costs. And, you know, they do the research, they know the history, they might rent headphones rather than hiring a tour guide, but they minimize their tour costs. So you might be wondering, where do we fall into all this? Well, 
we're not backpackers, we're, we're not slow travelers, and, and nor are we luxury travelers. We like to think of ourselves as travel bargain hunters, and we use some of the characteristics of each type of traveler. So let's talk about some of these things. The first thing we do is we balance high and low cost countries. We want to see the entire world. You know, if you think back over this past year, we spent a lot of time in low cost countries like Central America, Colombia, and the Balkans. At the same time, we've gone to some high cost places like Dubai, Northern Italy, and the Bahamas. But we want to see the entire world and by balancing it out, it helps us afford it. The next thing we do is we move fast. Uh, this is something that separates us from the slow traveler. We actually move more like a backpacker. We carry a backpack on our backs and about every week we're moving to a new place. Now, one thing we do with that to try to minimize costs is we travel regionally. So we may be moving every week, but it may only be two hours on a train, um, but it's, it's in the same geographic region. The next thing we do is we love public transportation. We, we take public transportation every chance we get, really for a couple reasons. It is significantly cheaper and you really get to learn the culture of a local area uh, and, and we love it. The other thing we do is we're bargain hunters, remember, and we will occasionally take the high-end travel. Uh, when we were in Central America and we had an opportunity to go to the World Expo, we ended up buying first class tickets on a plane from Panama to Dubai. It was a 50 hour trip, including two nights, and we got it for $2,500. This was a once in a lifetime opportunity. Bev had never been on a first class flight like that before, so it was the experience we were after. And that's something that we're gonna do occasionally, again, because we're bargain hunters. But 99% of the time, we're in the public transportation mode uh, experiencing the local culture of an area and saving money. The next area is lodging. We tend to stay middle of the road. We don't, we don't want to stay in dumps, but we don't want to stay in five-star hotels either. You know, the place that we're in right now, this would easily be a, a $200 a night hotel in the United States. We're paying $70 a night here. So it's a, quite a bargain. And don't forget, we spent 18 months in an RV, which is 250 square feet, uh, all over the United States. So we don't need to stay in luxury. We like to have a good bargain with lodging as well. The next area is food. And we try to balance out, you know, eating at home and going to restaurants. It's always nice to go to a local restaurant and try the traditional foods in the area. It's a little bit more expensive, um, but it's something that you want to do while we're traveling. Uh, it's also fun to go to a grocery store and, and see what you can find and cook at home. Uh, it's the balance that we enjoy. The next area is DIY tours. We love to plan our own tours and travel as much as possible. Uh, one of the best examples and experiences we had was actually in China a few years ago. We had our three daughters with us and our options were to take a $60 tour or a $1 train ride to get to the Great Wall. Well, we chose the $1 train ride and had, had a fantastic experience. You know, we kind of got off the beaten path. Taking the railroad up there is not where most tourists go, uh, but the sights and sounds and, and meeting some of the locals on the trains, it's experiences that we'll never forget. But we also like to hire tour guides sometimes. Well, recently, when we were in Colombia, we hired probably the best tour guide we've ever had. We had another couple with us and he took us out to the Rock of Pignol near Medellin and he shared so much history about the area that we never could have done on our own. So where it makes sense, we hire a tour guide, but in general, we like to plan our own trips. So you're probably still wondering how much does it cost us? As you've probably seen, you can take about any budgets. It's almost like going to an ice cream or a yogurt shop and adding on the Snickers and the, and the Milky Way and all the toppings. You know, we, we kind of said that 40 to 60,000 is the budget traveler and the things that we talk about add on to that. So next, let's talk about the components of your cost and how to estimate it. Now, a good rule of thumb is about 40% of your costs are gonna be transportation, about 25% is gonna be lodging, 20% is going to be food, 10% entertainment, and about 5% miscellaneous. And we have found this to be um, pretty accurate over time. So for a $50,000 budget, uh, transportation would be a little over $1,600. Now remember, this is for two people and it includes uh, coming back to the United States. 
Lodging is a little over $1,000. So if you think about that, that's just more than $30 a night, which almost dictates that you need some monthly rentals in there. Food is a little over $800 a month. Lodging, $400. Miscellaneous, $200. As you can see, it's pretty challenging to meet this budget. Uh, you have to be very mindful of all your costs, and you may have to move some things between categories. For example, take some of your transportation costs and move them to lodging or food. It just depends on how you want to travel, but it is a real challenge and you have to be mindful. As you can see, there's a very wide range of travel costs. And you know, asking us how much do you spend to travel the world is almost like asking how much does a house cost? It depends, there's lots and lots of options. And so we think a pretty good way of looking at it is take the budget traveler and maybe a base of $50,000 and then you add on the different experiences or cost adders uh, that fit your travel needs. For example, you wanna go to uh, more expensive countries, uh, you might add a $1,000 a week uh, for those countries. Um, you want to take an, an expensive experience somewhere, uh, take a cruise, you would add that on. Um, you take a look at your budget you have for food and lodging, and if you don't think you can meet those, you would add that on. And you're probably going to end up, you know, obviously higher, maybe seventy, maybe $80,000 a year, but at least design a trip uh, that you want to do around the world and understand the components of cost. So it may turn out that you can't afford a $75,000 a year trip around the world. Well, we have some ideas for you on how to do that. One is you could just try to travel like a budget traveler and see the whole world for a year and just travel differently. The second thing you could do if you, if you truly want the $75,000 experience is, do you have some expenses at home uh, that you could sell your boat or sell a vacation home or do something differently to be able to afford that. You know, we have sold everything. We have no expenses at home and it enables us uh, to do some of the nicer items uh, while traveling the world. The third thing you could do is um, don't think of this as an every year budget. Go travel the world for one year, nine months, you know, do a shorter trip uh, if you can't afford it full time and still go see the world. So if you found value today in this video and, and, and you learned some things about world travel costs, be sure to hit subscribe and follow along. We do a, a variety of different videos on travel, travel tips, retirement as we travel the world and we'd love to have you join us.